It's Friday, Feedback Friday, the feedback is day of the week. Ha! It's Feedback Friday, and, um, yeah. Oh, I got through that without coughing, and now I immediately want to cough. As I'm about to say, I got through that without coughing! I felt like coughing. Um, the patrons got a something different this week. Um, I got approached by a, uh, a graduate student who needs some research done for uh, for her um school and i asked her and and she offered the survey up to the patrons because it's a way of authenticating it's a real person so the data doesn't get wrecked so if you're interested in this sort of thing if you're interested in participating in that kind of stuff help support this channel become a monthly patron patreon.com slash liana k and this is a week where i'm very happy that i focus my content to getting patreon signups instead of worrying about sheer number counts or angries or all that thing because this was a week that no matter what i did <laughs> people just cherry picked what i said cherry picks the wrong word it's a term called incomplete listening that people listen to the beginning and then they start formulating a response and then they stop listening. And by Wednesday night, I stopped reading comments. I didn't read anything past Wednesday night. So if you posted comments on Thursday, the only video I read was the um, what game devs get wrong about female playable characters. Because uh, that one, nothing went completely in the shitter. In terms of, you know, a negative, um, a negative like-dislike ratio. It's one of those things where I watched it. I, it. It's the typical, it got bombarded by some subreddit or something that somebody was displeased about. And they came in framed. Um, and, and it, the unfortunate thing about when that happens is it creates low quality disagreement. It just, it's just people screaming. It's like, after a while, I can't read these super hopped up comments anymore. Because it's not even anger. It's just a lot. There's sometimes I got like fear. Sometimes I got resentment. Sometimes I got people being just, just, completely ignoring everything I said I wasn't talking about and that's what they focused on you know this idea that you can't tell me not to say a word well I never did you know it was why you shouldn't and I said that it's not about right and wrong it's about whether or not somebody's gonna get mad at you that is a perfectly defensible statement that a lot of the people who disagreed with me ignored and when that happens, there's a reason that happened. I'm starting to get concerned that people are just being trained to react that way. Even when someone is, you know, when I'm saying, hey, if you want people to think you're an asshole, go ahead. But, you know, sometimes it's okay that someone thinks you're an asshole. I'm just giving you the ability to predict if somebody's going to think you're an asshole. Um, people have just become trained to react badly to anything that brings up a cultural point. And I'm not quite sure what to do about it because it's become what Oran Darklord likes to refer to as a zero-sum game. That if, you know, you formulate a message that's going to appeal to this portion of the audience, this portion of the audience is just going to become irate and there's there's no message where any commonality can exist. It seems the only thing that works is stuff <coughs> like what I did in that video about female playable characters. I said that, you know, you want a game that's going to succeed with men and women create a high fantasy game with a female sorceress, like a female mage character. And people got very, very excited about that to the point that people started sending me like concept art and 
you know, there's a a, a guy, a, a studio I'm working with on another project that is willing to code it if I can get the money together. It's kind of like, okay, there's clearly interest in this game. Watch somebody else do it now. Um, that seems to work. If you give somebody like a tangible fictional thing, it works. But for whatever reason, when you apply it to real life, people just lose it. And it's not one type of people or another type of people. It's just people lose it. There's so much fear and there's so much resentment and there's so much <laughs> distrust. And I mean, <laughs> the fact that there were a lot of... Um, uh, screen names that I didn't recognize tells me there's some sort of subreddit at play here. Um, you know, those of you who joined Hate Watch, welcome. You're going to be disappointed in some way, but hopefully some of you will stick around. That That's happened in previous waves. And I mean, I, I watch it, right? The early stuff, very highly rated. And then four to five hours in, just enough for someone to 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 frame something on a on a subreddit or, or some sort of similar group then you see it get dislike bombed and then once they've sort of burned that out because it's artificial it's not an organic uprising the numbers start coming back up again and at that point it's like you know great all you've done is junked up my comments to the point that people who had kind of legitimate or or people I know are coming at this in good faith um all you did was junk it up so I can't tell who's who it's too bad because if you know if I say something and people have a get bad response and I can get a sense of why somebody has a bad response and it's in good faith I can go okay well I gotta tailor that more so people don't get upset because this is not worth something worth getting upset about it's just a suggestion and I mean, the big thing was people heard why you shouldn't, you know, whatever. It was in this case, it was why you shouldn't refer to yourself or why you shouldn't use the term two-spirit to describe yourself if you're not an indigenous person. The word was shouldn't, not can't. I never said you can't. Do whatever you want. Just people are going to get mad at you. And this is why. I don't think it's a hill worth dying on because there are other words to describe the exact same thing. But that's not saying you can't. And there was all this stuff about compelled speech and if a word is okay for, for one group, it should be good for all groups. It should be fine. There shouldn't be words for some people and words for other people. And yes, that would all be so in a perfect world, but we don't live in a perfect world. And... There's justifiable sensitivities. And, and this is where we get into what I call the facts don't care about your feels paradox. Because if feelings don't matter at all, then I don't have to care about your outrage about believing feels over facts or whatever the shoehorned, completely inappropriate counter argument they were. I couldn't tell because it was just so, that's why it seems so angry is they tended to spin around but not really land anywhere and not really respond to what I was saying, something that echoed something they heard somewhere else or I don't know. But if it's facts over feels, it doesn't matter how many times you hit a dislike button to bomb a video. It doesn't matter how outraged you are with something. None of that matters. It's just the cold hard facts. And the cold hard facts is there are certain terms that are going to upset people if someone from an out group uses them. That's not an emotion. That's not an appeal to emotion. That's an observable fact. Scream all you want. The facts don't care about your feels. This is why I find it so interesting that the very people that tend to argue that point 
seem to be so emotionally invested in given properties. And this this was a weird freaking week in a lot of ways. A friend of mine died. I've got to take my cat to the vet for something that may or may not be serious. I'm not going to know till next Tuesday. Um, you know, all the stuff in the U.S. But then, you know, there was the the Mario 35th anniversary announcement. And, you know, people went crazy happy. And, I, I you know, I was streaming. I couldn't watch it. I went and, and checked it out afterwards. And I'm like, this is a bunch of re-releases. But people are just so happy about Mario. And, you know, every time people get happy about Mario games, I love it. Because it just completely disproves the narrative on gamers like Mario breaks all the stuff about what both you know the we need more diverse games group um and the um you know the marketing wing of various game developers everything they think about what gamers want is disproven by how really excited people get about Mario games. Because you're talking about, like, a plus size Harry Plummer, um, who, you know, goes through all this stuff to help out a princess because she doesn't even get captured anymore. Um, there's, there's something with Peach, something, or Rosalina, or something like that, and the best he gets is, like, a kiss on the cheek. That disproves all of the women as sex objects, and all of the, it's just male power fantasy, and all that stuff. There's really nothing male power fantasy about Mario. You're running and jumping, and, you know, if you get hit, um, once, Without a mushroom, you die. There's nothing terribly powerful about that. And, you know, back in the day, it was limited lives. Yes, there were cheat codes, but, you know, the, the 99 live exploits, but there was nothing terribly power fantasy about Mario. Nothing. Um, it was it was more like the little guy being in service to his land, you know, being in, being in service to the, the liege lord. It was like a Japanese window on American culture. Um, speaking of which, a, a few people asked me what Zaftig meant, because meant, it's the German word for juicy. Zaftig, basic, it's, it's used in Yiddish, but it's to refer to, like, a woman who's, like, voluptuous or plump. And uh, other people brought up the the shoes thing, my shoes pet peeve, that I will, I will <laughs> forgive completely ridiculous costumes as long as the shoes seem practical. Um, and it's funny because I started playing Sunrun Kagura um, uh, Burst Renewal on on Twitch as a request, as like a palate cleanse. I promised I'd play it when I finished Last of Us 2, then Tsushima came out and I got lost in that. And oh my God, what a phenomenal game. Um, but uh, like highly, highly recommend Tsushima. I'll leave it there. Highly recommend it's open world. If you don't like open world, you won't like it. But otherwise, it's so good. It's just so good. Um, but, uh, you know, I played Senran Kagura and it was the strangest three hours of video games I've ever played. Um, way stranger than Nier. Nier, I could follow it. Senran Kagura, it's just, <laughs> it's a bunch of tropes. It's a bunch of Japanese tropes that I... And apparently some of them aren't even Japanese tropes. Some of them are just like Senren Kagura tropes. Um, I guess it's Senren Kagura. Um, but like I had no point of reference. And so I was just kind of letting it wash all over me. And like, why not? When you beat up enemies, their clothes fall off instead of them getting bloody. I don't see a problem with this. Um, but they all had fairly sensible shoes. You know, except for the one, the one girl who's got like, I called it the big, you know, the big boots and all her things are kicks. Uh, who is it? Cat. It's cat, right? Um, but, um, you know, they, they all had sensible shoes. Boobs are like popping out everywhere, but sensible shoes. I'm like, I'm good with this. Now, the one where there's absolutely, most of the characters had halfway decent bra support. 
even with the bounce. But I mean, anybody who watches my videos when I get when I get worked up about stuff, I make sure I wear a full support bra. But there is there is still earthquakes happening, right? It's okay. I I know this makes people self conscious to mention, but boobs move. So like. I don't have an issue with bouncing games. I actually find it weirder when there's no bouncing games because I live with bounce, right? But there's one point where this character has, you know, no bra and her shirt is just open and it's like it's taped on, but that wouldn't even work because the minute you start moving around, if you're that, it, it rips off. Like there's no tape, no glue, no pro adhesive, nothing in the world that holds that on under those conditions. And so I went into the menu and I actually changed, I bought some costumes and I actually changed it because it's bothering me. But the fact that I can change it, it's like, la, 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 okay, good, done. Improve my experience vastly. <laughs> and I mean, I, it, was, it was interesting because it was, it was this interesting kind of power. It's like, no, 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 I don't like that. I'm going to change it. And the costumes are all still pretty. And, you know, too sexy for most western tastes for i understand that it's the equivalent of college but it looks more like high school to western sensibilities and i think that's why people kind of get into the issue with that but in my mind it's college all right fine i actually did avert my eyes in in a few places and i, I do think that that there is a certain critical mass uh, uh after which She's just naked, so it's not sexy anymore. You lose some of the the allure when there's not enough clothes for it to register as a costume. You know, there there is a sweet spot. Um, and I'm not saying that as, you know, feminist principles at this point. I'm just saying it based on um uh there are there are costumes that cover up more that are sexier than costumes that like leave next to nothing to the imagination. Cause they're, you know, it's that theme. It's, it's that the fantasy, it's the character. It, you know, um, you need a certain amount of stuff to make that work. Right. You just, you just only, you need certain, a certain amount of material to make that work. Um, but it's interesting. It, it, it seems very harmless to me the whole Sunrun Kagura phenomenon. And I don't understand why people get so upset and want to, you know, take away fan service like that. It, it was not once I, once I changed, once I changed those couple of costumes, I did not like, cause one girl was running around with no pants and maybe that was envy. Uh, but you know, you wear pants in public. You have to, but I would not wear pants in public if I didn't have to. Um, but, um, you know, there were certain things. I got rid of them. Fine. You know, it wasn't the sexy that irritated me. It was the painful looking that irritated me. And it's the same thing with Mortal Kombat costumes. I don't care how little they're wearing. As long as there are pokey metal bits that look like they're going to jab into their chest the minute they do this because they got hit. That drives me, it, that, that is you are insulting my intelligence territory and you're actually, like there's a reason um, there aren't too many. I mean, that was a joke about Heavenly Sword, right? Her, her, her sidekick was right in the dude's groins and I suspect that's part of the reason the game didn't do better because all, all those so-called feminist uh, male game critics just, oh, you know, like it, it, it's, it's that, it's that uh, sympathy pain phenomenon. You have to stay out of the sympathy pain phenomenon for everybody, right? But it, it, it was, inter I mean, it's interesting research and, and I, I can't, I can't claim the games aren't fun. Like I, I can't. They're, the combat, except for one character who drove me crazy, the combat's actually decently meaningful though they throw too many moves at you at once. I've never played a game. I've never played that uh, one of those games before. So it's like, I'm like, what's going on? The tutorial is here. Read a bunch of screens. Do it once. <sighs> Terrible tutorial, but you know what I mean? Um, and it's interesting because after all the conflict on other things, it seems like we can <laughs> agree on 
a type of game with a female lead that enough people will play to sell games at a AAA level. So why hasn't anybody done it? <laughs> and that leads me to one comment I'm going to read for the week. Because I actually thought I was like, oh, man, my heart went out to this person because I would kick someone out of my gaming group for doing what was done to this player. So here it is. It's Odd Flex, um, <coughs> who's I've, I've never seen the screen name before. So welcome, Odd Flex. And um, uh, they say I'm, I'm not sure if male or maybe it'll come along. But this reminds me of something that really annoys me about gaming. One thing that makes me think that the idea that a lot of modern RPGs, especially high fantasy, will push the build your own role play OC original character. They usually praise the choices and availability of options for the customizable appearance. They all have 40 different hair and eye color styles, but won't even allow you to change your skin color to anything darker than a hamburger bun. Sometimes to even play dark skin characters, they'll make you change your race and stats. This is completely game breaking for a game that advertises itself as make your own story and role play games, especially for those that have a heavy role playing community. And don't get me started with race based classes. I shouldn't have to choose between being black and being a mage. This also happens in places like LARP, Vampire the Masquerade, D&D, except there's D&D. Oh, yes, there are D&D LARPs. I've, I've done them. Where I've had people encourage me to change from playing something. This was the part where I'd kick somebody out of my gaming group for this. I've had people encourage me to change from playing someone to play a more realistic race. Or sometimes I've had people say, I imagine you as white because it's more accurate. Or it's just the rules, but... Why are they rules? Why is being an elf a white trait? It's the audacity, if anything. I would literally spend hours building a character in the backstory just for some in real life race caveat to show up. It's a bit upsetting to have all these different races and cultures that represent lighter skin cultures, Scottish, French, Dutch, Russian, British, Japanese, Korean, and then some catch-all for everyone who's brown skin that's usually some evil empire or savages. I'm someone that's really into heavy role play and world building aspects, and it feels like everyone has options except for dark skin people. We shouldn't be more used to green skin orcs than people that hold a human skin color in high fantasy, white or light skin Asian coded characters culture often put under a classy and tasteful light and then Indian and African coded culture and high fantasy is written in a really tasteless lazy way I don't understand how a lot of games talk about options and inclusivity and for years or even then they don't notice how or if at all they write dark skinned people it's a bit annoying because they continue to pat themselves in the bat back and run off with a bag and that's why I was like okay in video games it's the same reason you don't see a lot of blondes as playable characters in games. There actually is an issue because of the colors they tend to use in backgrounds that... <sighs> this is lazy. You're right, it's lazy. But the character doesn't differentiate from the background enough. Um, Miranda's hair in Mass Effect was originally supposed to be brown blonde like the actresses that, that she's based on, but they changed to brunette because they thought it didn't look good. Um, but this is, I, I agree that I have an issue with black representation often being mixed race people, not because there's anything wrong with mixed race people, like more power to you. So like if, if you're not, if you're not going for that, you know, particular backstory, no big deal. But, I mean, we need more women like the actress who plays Mina Okafor on The Resident, who was also in Black Panther. We need more people in, in Black Panther. I mean, we're getting more darker-skinned actresses like Angela Bassett and, um, you know, Viola Davis and, and people like that. Um, but it's true that you don't see... Um, and what's his what's the guy's name um the guy who's in horizon zero dawn and he was also on um the wire um blanking but anyway you know what i mean he's he's darker but it's true that it, 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 there's still this this two black phenomenon which i agree with you drives me crazy too but in tabletop or larp role playing games People should just get the fuck out with that shit. Like, there is no 
skin color coded anything. Race does not connect to a human. It's it's not how we refer to race. It's it's like species, essentially. So why can't there be? Um, I admit I was a bit disappointed when when the Lord of the Rings musical did colorblind casting, and I was like, why didn't they just use different races? to you know all the humans were were black people and so then all the you know the elves could be asian and all the dwarves were white guys or something like that or something just so it was easier to tell you know that massive massive cast on stage who was who um it wasn't a very good musical but you know i I thought that was an opportunity to actually use that as a shorthand and still have diverse casting and have it work um but yeah when it's a larp or a tabletop RPG? Who the fuck cares? It's weird too, right? Because I I come up from that um, adventure game background in video games, as well as Dungeons and Dragons. And I mean, the people I played Dungeons and Dragons with in the sixth grade were not all white, you know? So that was never an assumption. It's like, no elves aren't elves aren't necessarily white i mean in dragon age they're not the dalish are are darker skinned though that's the hamburger bun skin color you reference but the whole point of pen and paper rpgs of larps is the rules are more flexible because you don't have to worry about code so just holy shit shut up and let somebody be a black elf if they want to be god damn it um but getting back to that quest for glory stuff um so quest for glory king's quest i mean yes king's quest 6 was very exoticized but it still had um i mean the shopkeep looked like james earl jones to me in that game um and then you get into like what is it quest for glory 3 where it's an it entirely takes place and, and yes it's an african tribe but every culture in in quest for glory was exoticized somehow you know the 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 russian and and germanic cultures were no less were no more or less civilized than the african one um and the african one had more furries in my mind automatically making it better lion tars for the win right but i mean the big warrior woman who was in the original quest for glory who moved over to and Quest for Glory Two was set in like um like a um uh a medieval Arabia uh like uh, like Aladdin type setting as well again very fictionalized but drawing from that culture um to the point that there was like some like Lebanese words and things like that peppered in uh highly highly fictionalized not claiming to be a real life place but still that that tradition was there there wasn't the this is just for white people thing um but i mean ahura from quest for glory 2 and uh, quest for glory and i think she was briefly in quest for glory 2 uh but then you know all of three was set in um in um for kana and then of course you know they they moved that over to to hero you when and those types of characters are there It, it was just the tradition that i have gamed in both on the tabletop side and on the video game side did not have that you know like forced and enforced fictional race essentialism as a as a part of it it's it's not i mean the joke i used to have a button for D that says what core rules if we don't like something we change it that's the fun of tabletop as long as everybody agrees to change it we change it right and this is the sort of crap that I think it's important that people hear these stories because they're mind boggling to most of us. You know, it's important for us to hear that people have had these experiences because going back to it, they're going to have sensitivities to certain things that other people won't based on that. And and that that to me isn't so much and and odd flux you can correct me if i'm wrong but that isn't so much i want to see myself in a game i want to see somebody like me in a game and more it's like 
Why not? Why are you setting these arbitrary, unnecessary rules that just seem like gatekeeping bullshit? You know, it, it, th there's nothing in, and it actually makes me understand a bit more some of the complaints about Dungeons and Dragons that I was like, what? Because again, I was like, what core rules? Like, what do you mean there can't be a, a you know, a, a black elf? As, as, as Howard Stern used to say, black like Wesley Snipes elf. Why not? I mean, I saw concept art that was that in Baldur's Gate. They had, you know, um, darker skin portraits for certain elf characters. And I mean, Dinah here was a human mage in, you know, the Forgotten Realm setting. She was dark skinned. Like Dinah here in games is exactly the kind of character, Odd Flex, I think, I think you're um, looking for from... Um, from the original Baldur's Gate. Um, and they just did that just because they thought it was cool. They didn't have to be forced to. And this is this is why I, I really think it's important to listen to people and not listen to the beginning and then just formulate a response because some sort of, you know triggering has happened and and you end up not responding to the entire content of some of something someone said and people on all sides that are, are well-meaning and coming to the table in good faith come across like just lunatics like just rage driven a-holes because they, they're they not responding to the actual content of what a person was saying. And I mean, some people blundered into some really... I had to stop myself and that's when I'm like, okay, I'm not reading anymore because I found myself actually getting upset. And it was an example of something I know no harm was meant. I think the person didn't think about the bind they were putting me in bringing up a Jewish person and how a Jewish person would react. Because for people who are new to this channel, like I keep kosher and I don't eat a lot of meat, so it's easy. But we our dairy dishes have chips all over them. Our meat dishes are like pristine. Um, but so a comment like what people who aren't Jewish aren't ever supposed to eat bagels again. First of all, there's nothing religious about bagels. Second of all, what can I say? I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't, right? Like, if I say, if I say, no, it's fine to eat a bagel, that could be taken as me invalidating me understanding sensitivities on something much more directly religious focused in another culture because it, of the, the comparison that was being made at the time. And then if I say, you know what? Maybe if you do appreciate bagels, you should watch the anti-Semitism and some of the, some of the content you share because anti and and I am I am doing equally valid for and against here specifically because I am in a bind. But it's valid to say, you know, the uh, most common type of hate crime year after year after year in North America is against Jewish people. Every year, look it up based on religion. So. You know, maybe watch that a little bit. Maybe a bit more sense, be, be a bit more sensitive. And like I said, I don't believe the person who said it or wrote it meant anything by it. But it put me in a really bad spot because there's that could be turned against me no matter how I answer. And I think that's the problem in a lot of these situations. You suddenly feel incredibly singled out. And you can't just be a person anymore. Now you're like this representative of a group. And you didn't want to be that right now. And, you know, th this is not, again, the it's not my job to educate you argument. I don't buy that. I'm just pointing out that, you know, there's an example of the thing I was talking about earlier in the week. that Somebody didn't mean any harm. They just grabbed uh, an example that I think they thought was inherently absurd. Um, 
when in truth a better example is matzo ball soup uh, because matzah is used in Jewish religious rituals but not as the balls. The flat wafers are the ones that are used, but that's what matzo meal is, is ground up and put into matzo balls because there's some religious significance to matzah. Does that mean nobody who isn't Jewish should be allowed to eat it? Well, no, a whole lot of delis and the pickle barrel up here would go out of business. And and that's what that's what I think is getting missed in this whole cultural appropriation thing. As long as somebody in the group is getting paid, you know, they, the makers of, you know, Black Panther, Rest in Power, Chadwick Boseman, they want people other than black people to go see that movie because they want to make gobs and gobs and gobs of money. That's cultural appreciation, not cultural appropriation. Even though a lot of that stuff, including the language, was straight up. It, you know, bits of different African cultures. Yes, there are different African cultures. Africa is not one place. Um, but um, the continent of Africa, not the country of South Africa. Um, but, you know, that's different than, you know, just just cribbing something from somebody, using it in an insensitive way, and then going, what's the problem? Why are you getting angry? Like, and people get on me about the mocking voice I use, but I use the mocking voice. And this is another thing that people took out of context. I said, there are the people that are doing it to mock, to just stir up shit. And then there are the people that are just confused. And, you know, I'll use the mocking voice to, to differentiate between the people who are actually trying to stir up shit and the people who are just, I don't get it. And the whole point was, I'm directing this at the people who are just confused. And yet people are like, why'd you have to do that? You're insulting anybody with that opinion. No, I'm not. You're not listening. And again, I don't know what to do about that. The thing that makes me sad about that is that good people, well-meaning people are shutting themselves out from useful conversations that can actually be pleasant for all sides because they're having an extreme reaction based on incomplete listening. And the problem is, is you can only do so much as a communicator if somebody is, is hell bent intentionally or unintentionally on, on only responding to a portion out of context of what you say. There's there's nothing anyone can do about that. And I do appreciate the, the multiple people who said they were taking those videos and digesting them slowly piece by piece. And I appreciate that precisely because they were trying to avoid doing that. And those sorts of things, you know, whatever their opinion on it ends up having happening to be. Or, you know, the people who say... I understand now, but I don't agree. That's progress to me. I don't understand why agreement is required because there's no right or wrong answer to these things. It's different perspectives. If you feel the need to agree, you're going to shut yourself off from a lot of like really cool experiences. But... It's something, right? I did find the people that the game control, the user interface metaphor for gender identity and like gender expression and gender performance, the people who took to it the most and was like, I get it now, were people who required inverted y-axis controls. And I didn't even think of that because it's a binary and I was trying to find an example that wasn't a binary. It was multiple genders, but yeah. There are a lot of people who go, how can you play that way? I can't play any other way. <laughs> like, it's innate, you know? Um, yeah, when I'm that person, I, I don't play inverted Y. I'll get at a, at a game station and somebody have inverted the Y controller and I'll be, ah! And then, you know, somebody comes up behind me who is an inverted Y player. Ah! Having that customization is just, it's the difference between somebody being able to play the game and not playing the game. Because that is something that it's just intuitive what it means you know whether you push up and the camera looks up or whether you push up and the camera goes down and i mean i understand that if you played a lot of flight sim simulators that 
push and down the inverted Y doesn't seem so inverted in that scenario because that's the way the stick actually works. Um, but for everything else, up, up, down, down, simple, good. <laughs> but some people don't think it's that simple, good. So at least I achieved that this week. We've made a little bit of progress. And that's what I'm focusing on. Because, and I know this video is going long, but it, sometimes it requires it. Um, <coughs> if someone has a reaction and then someone has a reaction to that reaction and someone has a reaction to that reaction to that reaction, it, ju it just escalates and get all messy. So what I had to do is when I felt myself feeling attacked by the, velo I'll call it the velocity of so many comments this week, I walked away I calmed down and went like, how can I break this cycle? And I admit, I was pretty wrecked Wednesday night because I just felt beat up by some of the comments, you know. And even though a lot of the times I'm saying, I know this person, this person isn't attacking me. They just have a strong opinion. I still felt beat up. And so I, I, I connect with people who feel beat up by the rapid pace of change because not getting it is not someone's fault either, right? And as I said, in my opinion, we have to stop treating it like it is. If somebody's trying and just doesn't get it, we can't treat them like somebody who's intentionally trying to be cruel. That was my whole point. And it seemed like that, that specific group, the people that just, aren't on board yet, the people that just don't get it, the people who need more time, the reason they're being so reactive is because they're being treated like bad people. Guys, you gotta let people treat you like anything else, okay? When someone's offering you an olive branch and, and giving you a space where you're not bad, you gotta avoid snapping because you've had so many bad experiences in the past when you were or you should avoid snapping just because you've had so many bad experiences in the past where that wasn't the case. Because you're getting a different input now. And it's like you're failing the Turing test. You just have this one designated response because you've, you've had the same interaction over and over and over again that you're missing when it's different. And that's no different than the whole social justice wing who have a whole bunch of canned responses, heavily laced in a lot of emotion um, and a lot of appeals to emotion. Um, I'm telling you, as somebody who's not on either side there, it all looks very similar to someone who's not invested one way or the other. Um... You know, I'm old enough to get OK Boomered, even though I'm Gen X. So I come at it from a different place. I think the difference between those people sort of indoctrinated in that the political extremes and the people who are just traumatized is that the people who are traumatized, once they realize that's not what they're getting right now, they're not being treated like bad people in this case, things can settle down. I just don't know how to overcome that lunge out of fear. Like, that's what it feels like to me. I'm not saying it is. I'm not reading minds. I'm just saying it reminds me very much of our old dog Snickers, who had profound, and yes, I'm comparing you to dogs. I do this with people, consider it a compliment. I like I like most animals more than I like most people. So this is a step up. Thank you, people who called me transphobic for things like this. Um, you can tell I'm still a little pissed off about that because it turned out it was in bad faith. And I ended up on a block list because of it. But um, uh, my old dog Snickers had profound canine PTSD. She was incredibly distrustful of strangers. So people who knew dogs and knew the body language she was fine with. 
But of course, what do most people do when they see a dog and they, they don't kind of know dog body language? Like, oh, what a good dog. The minute you bend down the dog, the dog feels rawr. And it, it happened. She tried to eat my sister's face once. Um, and I mean, no, she just snapped. She wasn't actually biting. She just snapped. But she was a, she was a 75 pound dog. Part Rottweiler. So kind of scary. Uh, but that was fear. That wasn't aggression. And people, some people thought she was a mean dog for that. She had nightmares in her sleep her whole life. And that's what I see when I see somebody being really aggressive in a comment. It's all a lunch. There's no intent to actually cause damage. It's just getting someone to back off. But... Everybody involved ends up having the shit scared out of them, you know, and, you know, it that is it. That was a question of changing the body language so the dog could understand and calm down. And apparently swaddling swaddling helps dogs like that. You put a big scarf around her. She calms down. Don't know why. But we need to find the equivalent so we can talk about this stuff. So that the people who, you know. Our, our trans and non-binary can have a, a dignified, respectful online experience without people, I won't repeat it because it's triggering for some people, without people saying mean things. But we also have to give people the space to not quite get it yet. Because as I said, these things are essentially abstractions. Identity is an abstraction. You cannot physically experience somebody else's identity. It only exists inside them. Some people handle abstractions much better than others. So the people that handle abstractions better, boom, they get it. They get the whole thing. People who don't handle abstractions well are going to struggle with it a lot more. And that's not, as I understand it, not something that is easily taught. It is very difficult to teach abstract thought. And that's why I keep trying to find metaphors because somebody, you know, they might not get the abstraction of gender identity, but an inverted X, an inverted Y, an inverted Y axis they get, they can touch that. They can understand that. And that's why I'm aiming for the metaphor, which, you know, are imperfect. But I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to have to get my, you know, steam up again because I did get beat up pretty bad this week, even before my friend died. And like, let me tell you, she would have taken y'all's face off if you came at her that way. That woman was a fighter. And I mean, her her whole thing was she beat the people up who she thought were going to beat up other people. You guys, you would have liked her. She was like a living video game character. Bright red dreads and all. Um, but, you know, I I have a different role. <laughs> different class. Um, I always wanted to be a wizard. I, I was just never particularly good at it until I got a little bit older. And, you know, if, if I want to be a magic user, I better start acting like it, which means you can't do this all the time, right? Need time to cast. Don't have that many hit points. Low defenses because you can't wear armor and cast spells. Every so often, somebody's going to get in and I'm going to need a res spell or a pretty major healing spell, right? That's the way these things work. So if you like these sorts of metaphors, if you appreciate this frankness, Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching.